Welcome everybody back here on Siegel Talks at the Martini Siegel Theater, the Graduate Center CUNY in the middle of New York City in Midtown Manhattan. And uh, it's another week uh, on planet Earth. Uh, it's a tumultuous uh, week uh, in, uh, in America and the world is watching what has happened here. There was a great uh, presidential election, at least how we see it. And, uh, and there's a lot of uh, turmoil around it and uh, it is actually a time place will be written about great place I think films will be done um, and we are right in the middle of it and where we do ask what are our values what is theater about what is art about also what is politics about what is democracy about all these things that are invisible we they don't exist in the real world they are ideas they are um, uh, imagine part of an imagination but still this is what uh, is important to our lives our work and also for a nation um, this is what nations go to war for and uh, and uh, now we are in a moment uh, that is dramatic and uh, play Antigone of course this has been mentioned so often in our talks like the Galileo from Brecht is you know what do you do what is law what is but what is a human law what is above it how do you follow a leader how do when do you resist and follow your own you know, a guidance. So a lot to talk about and a lot um, to do. We have uh, talked since March with theater artists from around the world, and uh, we feel very strongly that we have to listen to them. They have something to say instead of politicians who give speeches or uh, people who write articles or sculptures who make sculptures. Uh, theater artists create work that we see on stage. It's a way of thinking, a way of doing. It's a way of making a statement. And perhaps we have not listened enough. They have warned us about uh, the climate change for a very long time, about uh, uh, a corruption, about moral issues, social issues, and um, but also reminded us of the beauty of life. And if we miss anything, it's the beauty of theater performances and. Um, and um, and getting together as a group as a community and watch something and then talk about it which is a big big function um of it today we have something new we have something uh, significant i think we are going to focus on the theater of the real uh, somehow strongly connect also to the idea of documentary um, and theater um, and with me is uh, Carol Martin today as a co-host. Also, it's the first day. So we have a theme for this week. We will have a second week in the future about this and um, where we will talk about um, theater. The theme in this fall also is a little bit theater performance and the political. Um, after we focused you know, on voices from artists where we feel who have been on the right side of justice, on the complex struggle for freedom, liberty and free speech over centuries. And uh, I think also now they are uh, on the right side. We have guests uh, with us. Um, Carol selected um, 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 artists she feels and we both feel are of significance in the field of importance. Their work serves as a model and uh, puzzle pieces to create um, um, an overview of, on that field. And with us is the great hotel, hotel modern, we would say, or hotel modern, or I don't know how we would say it exactly in that way. We, we will hear it. And uh, Pauline Kalker, Hermann Halle, uh, Arlene Hornbeck um, are with us today, and they will uh, talk a little bit about who they are. And uh, But I would like to uh, welcome um, Carol Martin, who is a professor of drama at the NYU Tisch School of the Arts, and also for Abu Dhabi, and her books include Theater of the Real and Dramaturgy of the Real. And of the real and the world on the world stage and her articles have been uh, in contributions essays translated and books in many uh, many language and i think uh, over the last decades her field she kind of supported discovered uh, reinforced the theater of the real perhaps is a most significant contribution also coming out in the in a support of a uh, of development in contemporary theater that um, we all have to um, take serious have to take note and it is of meaning and of support and of importance. Um, she, of course, is a guest uh, editor of uh, TDR, where her work um, has been uh, uh, featured so, so many times. And she has been invited, of course, in universities around the world and um, has been a keynote speaker and in many, many, um, many, many uh, fields of theater respected, highly respected as an academic, but also as a within this theater community. So Carol, uh, welcome uh, to for being here with us and um, and give us a little uh, a little overview uh, over the field and tell us a little bit what is theater of the real? Why should we pay attention? Then we go to our artists. 
Okay, great. So first of all, hello everyone. And thank you, Frank, for inviting me to co-host. I'm, I'm very excited and I'm so happy that Hotel Modern is our first guest. I, I write about them in my book, Theater of the Real. Um, I saw their production of Camp at St. Anne's Warehouse in 2010. And I was certainly taken with what they were doing on so many levels. Um, but before I'm gonna give them a, 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 a larger introduction, but I'm just gonna say a very few things about Theater of the Real. Um, so, uh, you know, at, at the time when I began thinking about the subject, there was a lot of work um, that was uh, attempting to create interventions in justice to portray specific events from certain vantage points to claim that this is tribunal theater or um, a way of, uh, of bringing justice uh, outside of the law. Um, uh, autobiographical theater, there was uh, restored village performances that claimed fealty to original events. So I thought documentary, which we tended to use in the US more verbatim, used more frequently in the UK so I, I looked at all of it and, and saw a relationship um, and in idea, in originary ideas, but I decided to call it theater of the real as an umbrella term that incorp incorporates many different approaches and many different understandings, many artistic methods in somehow representing, interrogating, interacting with real events. So that, that was the, the unifying idea of theater of the real. You know, you can never, uh, one should never dictate what people should call their own work. So all of these terms proliferate, documentary, verbatim, nonfiction, theater of witness, tribunal theater, and they're, they're all fine. You know, I would argue for a, a little bit more clarity because each kind of approach does something slightly different or perhaps has slightly different methodology, but so be it, um, theater of the real. So I wanna say a few words about Hotel Modern um, to introduce them and then we'll let you take it away. So the company was founded in 1997 and um, they, Hotel Modern has done works about history. I think the most recent one is Our Empire and that's about the early history of the Netherlands and Indonesia and a vast scale model of the Indonesian archipelago fills the stage. There was early on the Great War about World War II. Um, one, about World War I. Uh, sorry, yes, sorry, World War I, thank you. Sorry, you're interrupting. But... No, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be corrected there. Camp. Um, which I write about in Theater of the Real. It's a, a careful miniaturization of the physical environment of Auschwitz-Birkenau. And at, at the time of writing my book, I said that camp gives us the impression that what went on in Auschwitz-Birkenau can be reconstructed and comprehended, can even be held in one's hands, that it is an absolute memory, the memory of the Holocaust in this place, that can be known and repeated. Um, and uh, all of those works, I believe, have soundscapes. I'm not sure about Empire, but they don't have verbal texts. So this is a unique, unique feature of Hotel Modern's work. There's well, also- We yeah. have to correct you about that. We will do that later on. <laughs> okay, great. Um, there's fanciful works, Seaplane Mothership. It's an ap apocalyptic work featuring old books, short films, scenes from after the bomb, pop art science fiction, gnomes and poets. It sounds fascinating. I'd love to watch it. Shrimp Tales, another fanciful work um, about quote unquote, the fascinating plague that calls itself humanity. And Hotel Modern uses 350 dried shrimp to play the roles of people. Um, and there's Rococo, Hotel Modern's Decoration of Love to Fantasy and Imagination. It's about sex and curiosity and what happens when lust and curiosity are given free reign. So I'm hoping you'll talk to us about what does happen indeed. Um, so all the work 
uses scale models that take up entire stage spaces. When puppets are used, as opposed to shrimp, they are like approximately two and a half inches high. Is that right? Like a finger length. Um, so the, the artisanship that goes into creating this work is enormous. Um, at the same time, there are, and I think this is, so one of, you know, Hotel Modern's work comes up against Theater of the Real, it comes up against puppetry, it comes up against, you know, very innovative scenographic design. It has a unique dramaturgy. But one of the things I personally love is that um, the human performers, so the, in, is the company members, the three company members, are always, always present their manipulation of the puppets in visible ways that help us, make us think about the nature of human agency in historical events, in fanciful stories, and even biblical myth. Um, so uh, I should, I just want to mention the Hotel Modern has one of the most fabulous websites of any theater company ever on the planet. Um, and maybe somebody <laughs> can put that in the chat, maybe I will in a moment. But there's, you know, in my own, in my own personal viewing of miniature things, I just wanted to say that I grew up with Colleen Moore's Fairy Castle, which um, is, is a, is a, it's a dollhouse. It's a huge dollhouse, but it's in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. And it was built around, I think in the 1920s by uh, Colleen Moore, who was a silent film actor. So she had excess money. And it was, it has things like a, a willow tree that really weeps and books authored by um, famous authors and a staircase where the fairy queen can float up the circular staircase. Um, so, and more recently, um, but also coming out of Chicago, there is the nutshell studies of unexplained death, which were created by Francis Lesnar Lee. And these are exquisitely detailed um, miniature crime scenes that Glesner uh, created to train homicide investigators in how to look for clues to a crime. Um, and now they reside in Harvard, but they're all over, they're all online, so one can look at them. So, you know, the whole idea of why miniaturization? Um, so I just wanted to mention one more work. I think Hotel Modern did this incredible, did Rossini's 1818 opera, uh, Mose in Egito, or Moses in Egypt, and um, uh, which I watched uh, last night for the first time. And it seems like the, your work has always been spectacular in that it invites us very explicitly into a certain kind of viewing. And the dramaturgy seems built upon notions of spectacular. But with uh, Moses in Egypt, um, it, it's, it takes on an even grander scale because there are the opera singers on stage as well. So, um, so I'd just love to hear you begin to talk about your work and um, yeah, and we'll ask questions as we go along. Okay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, thank you. I, 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 I don't know if it was clear that uh, that uh, we, we filmed the models and we filmed the puppets. So okay. yes, so what the audience see is us uh, filming uh, the puppets and the, the models on stage and uh, uh, the, 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 it is projected on the big screen and together with the soundscape, the, the, the composer is on stage, he makes the sound, the live soundscape. So that comes together. And so it's uh, us making the film and the audience see us doing it at the same time so and seeing the results yeah say a few words about uh, who you are it's all, you know maybe herman pauline and then alain and how do you fit in the company and then we come to to how how you all got started so so um, first of all again welcome and thank you thank you for joining us thank, thank you. you for having us yeah. it's an honor. <laughs> um, okay so my name is uh, pauline kolker I'm an, uh, an actress and theater maker and um, 
uh, yeah, actually Arlena, who uh, was also an, uh, an actress. Uh, oh, you say who you are, Arlena? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm. Oh, I thought it was uh, okay. But uh, yeah, I'm also uh, an actress, <laughs> and uh, I'm Arlena Hornberg. And uh, yeah, uh, Pauline and I, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, Stel uh, maar even jouw verhaal. Stel maar even jouw verhaal. Okay. Yeah, but you, we say who we are. Okay. So you say you and tell okay. about, yeah. a bit oh, more I'm, about I'm yourself. Her, okay. I'm, I'm an artist. A visual artist. <laughs> I'm, I was trained as a visual artist, and now I turned into kind of theater maker together with with Pauline and Arlene. Yeah. So uh, that's our names. And uh, well, Arlene, you go on then. Yeah, that I was wanted to tell that uh, Pauline and I, uh, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, we started acting when we were very young and we joined uh, lessons together. And after that, we uh, uh, did theater school in, in, uh, in uh, R&M. And after school, we wanted to um, yeah, uh, have, a, have a, a company. So, um, uh, but we wanted to mix different art forms. And uh, so we, we started with uh, making a musical performance and then uh, we met Herman. And uh, yes, yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, because then uh, Herman, he was, uh, he was uh, my boyfriend at the time when Arlena and me uh, founded Hotel Modern. And Herman, he as a visual artist, uh, he, he made models for uh, city planners and um, architects. architects yes. And um, he, he, I once helped him when he created a huge model of, of Rotterdam and the environment was a model, um, I don't know about inches and feet, but it was uh, uh, well, like, like the size of, of half a football field. It was, <laughs> 15, I think 100 feet, 100 feet long, I think, and 40 feet wide, something like that. 15 meters by 35 Five meters. meters yes. I don't know, but it's it's like huge. He made a model like that, uh, which was I found very theatrical. And then uh, I got the idea of inviting Herman in Hotel Modern and working together and putting models on stage. And this was in uh, in in 98. And so then at that from then on, um, uh, we we. Uh, work with models on stage and um, yeah the, the first show we created was a uh, was about uh, a city and it was without cameras we had uh, we we just had the idea we're gonna okay we're gonna bring a model on stage what can what can models do and at, no, the first idea was okay uh, models can you make a city with models so we made a huge city with uh, so yeah, with cardboard boxes. Yeah. Uh, so the first step was the uh, Yeah, it was. It was the, it, the models I made were all the buildings were like this, and then we had a whole stage to fill. So the, I said, yeah, it had to be city, real big thing. So I used the cardboard boxes that uh, refrigerators will were packed in. Now nowadays they're in plastic, but then they were in cardboard. So big cardboard boxes stacked upon each other, skyscrapers and buildings, and then we. Um, started to uh, to to figure out what we could do on theater with that and how we could get life into it and so um well, then 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 the the <clears throat> in in the models i always used strange things household materials and glasses and brooms and everything that i could use and there originated the idea of um using uh, later in 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 um in the show for instance we the, everyone's talking about in the Great War, how parsley becomes trees. You put parsley, you put the camera on it, you put a little rabbit in front, and then everyone sees trees. And I found that out in, in the models. If you use, uh, for instance, a uh, few pieces of wood, and you put one big uh, uh, pointed piece in the middle and, and some, some something green around it, everyone sees a village with the church steeple in the middle. And it's it doesn't look at all like it, but you have to trigger the imagination, and we try to do that in in, in theater. So we uh, with the, with the boxes, so all kinds of materials we moved around in it, and then so for instance, yes, uh, we had little breads being the cars, buns, uh, yeah, bread buns, uh, and 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 we moved them, uh, yeah, in between the cardboard boxes and so the, the breads were were traffic. Car, uh, traffic hundreds of them and then we had big breads being buses and then these french breads being airplanes and uh, so it was really the, we uh found all kind of ways of uh yeah putting herman herman's visual language on stage and uh actually it was also theater of the real because it it was 
like a real city uh, with real city elements. Uh, there were, we had, for instance, we had a banana that was a character and that uh, jumped of a, of a building, he, he suicide, maybe, suicidal, yeah, yes. suicidal banana, and it was uh, happy, but also um, the yeah, so yeah, also was, per perfume bottles that were having a party on the roof of a skyscraper, and uh, uh, beer cans. There were hooligans like oh, so uh, man, it was falling. Uh, in, in, <coughs> and the boxes mm -hmm. could open, and there was a character inside. Um, and from then on, so that was without cameras, and then uh, Herman. Yeah, it, was, it was nice that at that moment, at that time, um, Rotterdam is, is uh, Rotterdam is now booming in a way, and, and everyone discovered it, and it's it's Rotterdam is hip, and you go there. But in those days, it was the city was not so popular yet. Cities have become more popular. Yeah, and we were trying, you know, and we were trying to to to, to really ex excited about the city, and we were making a portrait of Rotterdam, the city where we're in, with all these all these things that yeah yeah so then herman he worked uh he, he bought a camera at that time it was uh not so easy to buy cameras now everybody has a camera in, in his or her phone but um in 1998 that was different so uh, that was the first time when cameras got affordable and herman uh, bought a camera and um and, and in his in a studio he started to making models um uh in front of the camera so then you could see the, the model and, and, and a landscape happening or um, some style. Yeah, so uh, he, create, he created the models in front of the camera. So you could see his hands yeah. making, making the, the scenery, the landscape. And then, and then he got the idea of making a, a show with that technique. And then he got in his head, um, he wanted to do the, the, uh, the First World War because war is very, uh, why, maybe it's good for you to yeah. tell why you wanted to make something about war. Yeah, well, it, it, the first idea wasn't, it, I, it wasn't that I wanted to make something about war. I had, I had, we had, we found out that it was nice to make landscapes in front of a camera and see hands doing that. And <clears throat> then I thought, yeah, maybe that's, we should do it on stage, we should. And I had, had just the landscapes and the first idea was, um, uh, I, I had yeah I had a vision of, of a little table with earth and on a big stage and an, and a big orchestra making a lot of music and then um, yeah and then okay, yeah and then and then um, and people saw these hands making landscape with music that was that was all that's it was a kind of vision but then um, of course you need you need you need, you need a story you need a drama and. Um, I thought, well, what can happen in a landscape? And walking around, I didn't know, I didn't know. And suddenly in my head popped the image, the, the, the image of the landscapes of the First World War, these black and white pictures of uh, uh, destroyed landscapes with puddles of mud and, and an old tank and broken trees, just that. And I thought, wow, maybe could that, and I, I thought, oh, that could be beautiful to make. And then I thought, let's make, then I thought, maybe, maybe we should do that war. But so simple there was as that. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, it may be also interested to tell why you were in. It's yeah, why, why in the war? Because it's, it's war is a big theme then, in our work. Yeah. So and it, it has a reason in, in our there. life. So <laughs> maybe you tell your reason. Yes. Yes, it was. Well, it was. It, it also triggered because the, the, the des desolation of the landscape. But it's also, um, of course, uh, I was raised by parents who were in the Second World War. And my father was in um, in Indonesia at the time. He was born there, and when he was eighteen, the war broke out, and he had to go in the army and shoot Japanese planes. And then he was in a prison of war camp. And uh, I always loved those stories as a kid. I, I, I thought they were fascinating and exciting. And and of course, as, as as a little boy. And then later, when I had to go in the army in nineteen seventy seven, there was uh, in Holland. There, uh, I had to be. Time. I had to be. Yeah, I had to. Had, I had to go. Everyone. Every boy had to had to go in the army then. Um, <clears throat> and I was I was a bugle player in the army. So I had a, in Amsterdam. So I had an easy job. But I also. Two or three times we had to shoot we had shooting practice and they had to shoot a machine gun and at, until that moment i always thought it was the 70s that uh, uh, all my friends were pacifists and and so i so was i and, and guns were for crazy people they were for they for bad people guns were bad and people who like guns were bad and then after the day of machine gun shooting i realized to my horror that I enjoyed it really it really it was so exciting to shoot a machine gun really 
the sound and the 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 the, the noise and the, the the power of it and then oh my god i'm there's something wrong with me and um i was really I was really shocked by that and then but i also understood something i thought oh but this is why all these guys these boys running around the world with guns that's the reason the war they they all go into war it's it, i understood something about it and um then I asked, then I started wondering more, what it was it like for my father to shoot machine guns at airplanes, but he could be shot too. And it wasn't all fun. And then that stayed with me, that fascination for what it was like. I also realized I was in, in peacetime in war, but there was a cold war and sergeants were always talking of the Russians who were coming and I thought, nah, that crazy talk. But then I realized, but, but then also there's, you, there's try, a, you tried out your machine gun on a helmet. Yeah, my own helmet. Yes, it was, was, was yeah, yeah, but also part of that story. That yeah, um, yeah you, I, so um, yeah, yeah. Um, so you 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 guys in a way you know the miniature worlds uh, <laughs> video <laughs> no, only, um, so um, you uh, created um, uh, invented a, a form of showing um, um, stories or uh, sharing. Your, your thoughts. Um, going back to Carol's introduction, um, there's kind of a history uh, as, as being part of the theater of the real and the new forms, how to produce it. Do, what did, how, what's your reaction, what you hear, what she said about you guys? And um, well, um, I think after the, 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 this was what we were coming, um, so that we, we, Herman chose the First World War, which was not the war that, that his father fought in, but it was a war which, in which we could tell a story with, with models. And um, then we found out, because this show became a very powerful um, evoking performance, uh, we had huge success, we, we found out that with models, we could, we could recreate um, history and uh, we, could, we could recreate battlefields. Uh, we could really be there and, and with, the, with the little cameras we had, we could look through the eyes of the soldiers that fought in the trenches uh, live. Because there are of course many films of the First World War, war films, um, uh, and there are, there are theater pieces. But we, what we do, live animation film, uh, it it, re it recreates. It has the best of theater and the best of film at the same time, and also uh, the best of puppetry. And I, I think, yeah, in a way, by by accident, because we make models and theater, and we have these themes in our lives. Uh, this is what what happened. And um, after the Second World War. Um, I, I got the idea of oh, the first world war I wanted to, I wanted okay. to make a show about the second about the, about the Holocaust as, as my uh, my grandfather and um, and the parents of my grandfather uh, were killed in, 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 in Auschwitz and in Sobibor and then I, I thought this this method is so great to oh great yeah it, it brings it it's back you know yes yeah, so um, it, uh, phys physical, uh, the, 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 the theater is, is physical, and and our models bring bring uh, old landscapes, cityscapes, landscapes. It brings them. It brings phys them physical in in the theater, and we can we can witness we can witness the the world. And, we and can also together with this, with the sound, yeah? so it is, it's, it's very sensitive, very uh, with your eyes, with your ears, etc. So it's, uh, you are really there. Yes, many senses are, are triggered. And um, so then we wanted to yeah. create Camp, which also is a documentary. And therefore it was, it was really important for us to be documentary in that way. And also with the First World, World War, actually. Um, uh, yes, we wanted to recreate that. The camp, or actually, it's not exactly Auschwitz Birkenau. It's based on on uh, it's based on some features, but it's not exactly because the scale would be much bigger. So it is a, a kind of Auschwitz Birkenau, but not exactly uh, what it was. But the things, the events that happened there, uh, they are they happened, and uh, the reenaction is it, it it gives the opportunity to the audience to to witness what happens to be there physically 
um, but of course not feel the pain <laughs> or, you know, you, I would never recommend anyone to, to be witness of that physically or to be in, in a camp that like, nobody wants it. It's traumatizing, but using puppets, it is not traumatizing, but it is um, opening your mind, the eye in your mind, uh, allow, allow the images and allow the events to come in and to take them in and, and to reflect on, on them. So I think that's what our art form. Yeah, yeah. yeah Carol. Yeah, show, show, so one of the things you've so like, in thus far is moving from these, um, from Herman's um, cityscapes, which are fascinating and theatrical to look at, to to within these large um, scapes, uh, creating human dramas and enabling both the macro view of let's say the, the war field and um, with the puppets and the camera on the puppets and the live feed animation at the same time, being able to zone in on how the individual soldier puppets are moving, experiencing this war. So it's, and I think the same thing is in camp and it, it's an incredible, um, uh, micro and macro view simultaneously. But how do you get to to which scenes in the drama that you want to portray? I mean, because you have to make, and then you have to dramaturgically, you know, put them back to back. But what is that process like? Well, the the, the process we we always do a lot of research for our performances. For like uh, with the First World War, we uh, yeah we read a lot of books because. Yeah, there are no survivors. So we read a lot of books, a lot of letters. And so we had this big bulb of, of, uh, uh, of uh, material. And uh, with camp, we, uh, we talked a lot to uh, survivors and uh, heard their stories and read a lot. And then um, for with camp, for us, it was, uh, we wanted to show the, the machinery of the camp. So we, we wanted to show it day and night in the camp. And uh, it was about uh, like the heart beating of the train that comes in, people getting out. So the, the audience sees what uh, uh, where the pe people were led to and eventually the guest chambers where, where they were killed. So for us, uh, it was very, in, the first thing what we thought, yeah, we, we the guest chamber must be, we have, must have uh, seen with the guest chamber and the train coming in. So that were, uh, and then we heard stories of uh, the survivors and uh, uh, um, and and some, they were very like, we, yeah, we have to put them in, for example, like a man told that uh, they had to witness uh, uh, fellow prisoners being hanged. And uh, that was so, uh, yeah, something so terrible and so cold and so, uh, yeah, we, we, we had to put that in so and uh yeah but yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. but what also important for for the, is is um we we like i said we have a lot of research we have a lot of wishes we want to put in in, in the show oh that's a possibility that's a possibility and then always there comes a moment that we try it with puppets and a camera and that's 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 a decisive moment because of the, uh, there's a lot possible a lot of things are possible with cameras and puppets, but a lot of things are not and you can only find out by trying. So a lot of things uh, we throw away because it's not possible to do with a camera. And and uh, then doing it, it's, it changes because other things are possible. And and it, it, it's a lot of depends on the uh, yeah. what the puppets can do. And and yeah, for example, we, like uh, like uh, within camp, we we tried to we tried dialogue. First, we tried uh, like in, in in the first World War performance. Uh, we we have uh, these texts of the soldiers. So you hear uh, Pauline and I. We do the voiceovers, and that there that there are letters from uh, soldiers. You hear. So you we have text in that. But with in camp, we we tried to do dialogue, but it didn't work. That the puppets. It, it it wasn't real. It it's yeah. It didn't have the power. So we decided to believe skip, it. To skip text to yeah. only hear the sounds, and it made it even, uh, um, yeah, it more. made it more stronger to look yeah. at. And how did you think about putting yourselves in the performance? 
I mean, it, it's it, uh, especially with camp. I mean, it's one thing to manipulate puppets and not have the body of the puppeteer as part of the kind of dramaturgy of the stage. But it seems that one of the things you do when you decide to uh, enter the performing area to manipulate the puppets, how you know, in different ways, in different situations, that your very physical presence becomes part of the dramaturgy. I'd love to know how you think about that. Well, we 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 use we see ourselves as uh, in the, in these shows, not an average show, but we see ourselves as, as, as mediums. So we are we are we are there to um, to manipulate the puppets. We uh, we choose we choose for that attitude on stage. So um, we are totally focused on uh, on the, on the puppets and on the images we create. Mm -hmm. So we never look at the audience. We don't make contact with the audience. We um, we do, uh, as we are aware that we're in, in the Great War, we are aware that we, we give energy on stage. So for instance, when uh, I, have, I, I, have, I, I, I sit with my microphone saying a voice over and then I have to, have to cross the stage to make a scene when it's an energetic stage, I decide to run <laughs> energetic, uh, even though I could also run like this, but then my, uh, um, I use my body and my energy to run, but I'm, I'm not uh, in that way. We are aware, like we are, we are the we are the motor. We are the, the gasoline. <laughs> we are the gasoline and the motor of this machine. So we have to make these things work. And with our physical energy, or uh, uh, we 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 create like like dance. It's more like chore choreography. We, we we dance on stage. But like I said, in the Great War, we have text. So then we are really giving all our acting skills. To act, but then we sh we 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 decided to uh, the, the the audience is in our back, so the audience does not see our face. We decide to look at the at the screen, and um, but then still the fact that we are there live, we are aware that the audience looks with us at the screen. So we we give focus, and with camp, um, we are aware that um, yeah, there are some scenes in which we divide puppets uh, to different parts of the camp and then we are also so then it's more it's more um mime or <laughs> dance con contribution and uh but yeah, yeah. Way, and, and with, with great war herman um his hands are often uh on camera and then you know he, he, put, he puts in plants or he puts in dead soldiers actually in in the great war you don't see uh living puppets you just see uh feet and you and you look through the eyes so it's totally a, a point of view and then sometimes you, you see like Herman's hands uh in on camera uh, uh, making making a, a landscape green again like putting in and, and in that way he his hands are a kind of we, we are not religious but in a way he, they are the hands of God or of fate teller yeah uh, they, they are both storyteller but also fate uh, who, who, who decides you live because there's also a scene where, where their puppets put in and then the, the hands are, are uh, yeah, like, like taking the lives. Them, killing them like this, shooting yeah. grenades, shots, and they're flying through the air by like this, yes. Yeah, but like like in camp, but it is, it is uh, yeah, like more more roles we play because we, we manipulate, but we are also like almost perpetrated because we, we set the thing in motion. So it is, yeah, it's not that we we are walk around like we're there, but and it, it's a kind of emotionalist that we do it, kind with kind of distance. But uh, yeah, it's also <laughs> that. Yeah, that but the theater. there's also a scene where I pick up the puppets and then I try to do that as tender as I can. Yeah. So sometimes I really want to take care of the puppets. So uh, when, when it's night, they go to sleep, and then I really, uh, yeah, try to do it as soft as possible, picking them up. So we. One time we take care of the puppets, and other time, other uh, and another moment we we kill them or we just place them. So your your physicalization is really really important as you describe it as part of the the whole the energy or the ambiance or the you yes. know the, the subtleties of meaning in the piece. But Frank, I wanted to, did you have something you wanted to ask? Do we have a minute uh, maybe to show on a screen to share um, so we could have a small a small excerpt. Um, 
Okay. Uh, we don't have technically. We are not able. Oh, sorry, no, no, we we don't have. We got a. We 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 did we got the email. Just Carol, you have a you have a you have a second somewhere, but um. Uh, I have um. What I have is uh, I have the, the website, but I have also um. Uh, the link. Let me just see here, to um, Moses. Um. But uh, Moses actually, uh, yeah. we have, it's it's directed by Lotte de Beer. Uh, so we are actually not the creators of, of Moses. Uh, the creators is, is is Lotte de Beer. She she and she used us to play a role. So uh, in Moses, we we play the the role. We play the mass scenes. We play the plagues. Oh, we are also manipulated of the death. But it's it's well, not we people. You know, everybody can can look it up. It's easy to find. Just a question um you know one can write plays uh, you can dance uh, uh for theater you can or you say you make a film why do you think the way you work the idea of the model theater as a model and the camera why and why do you think this is um, um the, the 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 form you chose why is, is well, it um, we, we just uh, it, it evolved mm -hmm. And yes. um, it's also where our talent is. Uh, it, it, it's, it was not a decision. It was something that happened to us. And yes. uh, it was it, it was based uh, or uh, actually I was always interested in more, more a little bit more in, in physical theater and in visual theater uh, and, and, and up objects. I always liked objects. Uh, Arlana, you were also not so much fond of text theater, I think. No. No, no, no. So it was uh, it was something, and we 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 liked visual art very much and performance. So like with Rococo, it is more like a performance uh, thing we do. So that are elements that we yeah really liked very much, and not classical way of acting and classical way to uh, eh? to uh, yeah. classical pieces. And it, with, and it was with, our. With uh, encounter with with Herman's work as a, as, a, as a model maker and that we applied uh, just just by thinking wow this model is great let's let's put it in theater and this worked so well that we yeah. thought no it was like an invention like oh this is so great let's do more with this and then Herman brought in working with cameras we got a composer Arthur Sauer who designed uh, soundscapes uh, who made sound concepts that did, they did well with our models so um, it's just something that happened to us and we fell in love with that way of working it was an a, uh, like an addiction like once you can tell stories about a whole world so why go back to a few characters Yes, and and, <clears throat> and we like films too, and and in a way, uh, <clears throat> I, I was trained as a painter on the academy, and after the academy, I didn't paint anymore. I didn't know for whom and what, and I couldn't anymore. And I started making objects and more three dimensional, and and now it all comes together in a way the the, the three dimensional models and. Sometimes I think I'm painting again with a camera on a, on a flat screen. But the, the great thing is that it's not a painting. It's 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 just the illusion of, of it, it has everything movie has and 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 a painting. It, it it's you can play with illusion and and depth and and uh, but it's not really that the, the the audience sees the depth by moving the camera. And at the same time, it's it's a three dimensional model. You can make the whole world on stage looks wonderful too, like in in uh, our empire. Like the whole, all the green of the islands of Indonesia there, it looks looks wonderful. And then on screen you see the 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 the, the, the little the, the the little dramas playing out in on these islands. So like 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 Carol said, you did the macro and the, and, the, and the micro. That and yeah, like and in love with the media in a way. A rich art form that it's not only of course the visual that is very important, but also the yeah. sound and also us acting. So we a lot of ideas and uh, things we want to express. We can do it in very different ways. So it's very, it's a very rich um, yeah, art form we invented, and it gives us the opportunity to yeah to tell the stories we want to tell and and to to say things about. Yeah, what we think is important or things we uh, uh, encountered in our own life or in our family life in our etc and we uh, we are able to 
although it is limited in a way, and like Herman said, you cannot tell everything. And sometimes we are really struggling, like, oh man, we want just to tell a story, you know, and uh, then it's really a fight, but uh, it is, it, it's so rich and it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very rich material. And I uh, well, want to uh, go into the documentary and some of your work. There's also, it's not, so you describe so beautifully you, your, uh, how you create a world through this incredible attention to detail. Um, but there is, there is a, a, a critical point of view operating. And um, it's definitely there in camp, but it's also there in one work that Herman might have done alone, and that is Heroes, which was about um, September 11th. And um, in, in that, there, uh, I live in New York, so we watch the planes fly into the towers. And then of course it was repeated ad nauseum by the media. But what Herman did and what Hotel Modern did is show um, that event from the vantage point of the people in the towers. So this was, and in doing that, in titling the piece Heroes, which, and David Bowie's music was the accompaniment, um, there, there is a, uh, a humanizing of an event that you know was called beautiful by some people. So we see the, the plane from the vantage point of a puppet of a person standing inside the tower. And this, this is you know extraordinary. And the kind, those kinds of choices, I think, in each of your works it is, goes beyond simply um, replication, but is, is an inquiry in, into the event itself. I just really wanted to say that. I have here a, a little clip of camp, which I, we can try to, should we do that? Yes. Just try to show a tiny bit here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let me just see if I can be successful. So um, yes, I have to do this and then uh, wait. And then I have to somehow, okay, just bear with me. I'm going to choose this through my share screen. Um, here we go. Are we good? Yes. Yes. You see it? Um, so, you know, also the, the camp happens over the course of the day and, um, but it also happens over the course of the Holocaust itself when the mechanism of killing became more efficient from uh, killing prisoners individually to the use of um, Cyclone B, to gassing, to, and in between there was uh, killing individually, pushing um, bodies into gas chambers. So the, the sense of time in your work is not literally the time of the event. It's a kind of, um, I don't wanna say mythic, but it, it, it is time that is not exactly historical time. I'm wondering if you could talk about how you think about time. Well, we, we, um, we also, we always look like what's the clock 
we record a clock of, 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 a, of a show. And we also, uh, of course, when you build, when you build a story, you, um, you, you make, um, you, 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 you work with, um, what is it, uh, you make a composition, you make yeah. a composition and in which you can s s often go from, from, from small to big, to medium, to small again, to big. And then you also have the idea of the longer, the longer line. So yeah, a, a play a, or a novel or a movie, it's all, also always has a composition and, um, and, and the difference between a, a picture uh, or visual art and theater is, is, is time. So you, you'll be, of course, we manage time in a very uh, uh, aware way. And we, we, often, we often play with uh, yes, this thing of, uh, as day I say, night. Uh, yeah, you can make a day, a day and a night, but that's in a later stage or that's, yeah. I, I mean, you, you make, um, yeah, you make, you, you know, you, you make a rhythm when you, when you create. So when, when we work, uh, that's also an answer of your question that, that you asked, how, how do you decide which scene you put in? Mm -hmm. uh, and explained, we, we do, we do, uh, we do research very broadly and then, and then we try to work out the things that we find and some things when, when with our means, we, when we can tell them, right, they can become a scene, but the montage we do like, in a, in a later phase. So first we gather, we gather a lot of material and we have many scenes, uh, small scenes, big scenes. And at that, in, in, in like uh, in, in, in the first few phases, we did not decide what to start with. So the, when we have all this material and we have all kinds of scenes, you know, we have, uh, and then we think, okay, how, how, how we're going to make the montage of this and uh, and then we can we can think of different things like for instance okay we make a day and a night or we can um uh yeah that, that's so yeah, but, no, but, again, but for, some, for example it was very different uh, with uh, the great war uh, that it was uh clear that it would start in an up way because uh the soldiers that were going to war that they were yeah, not all of them, but they were kind of optimistic and delighted that ah, there's going to be a war, we're going to fight, and then with Christmas we're back, etc., etc. So the, the, the performance started very up and almost in a very cheerful, playful way. And then during the performance we go, as the mud gets bigger and bigger, we also suck in more and more in the mud and the audience gets deeper and deeper in that terrible war. But with Making Camp, it was very different because you couldn't start up or had like this classical line going down, 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 because you were already down. It was already so terrible. So we thought, oh my God, there, 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 there is no way we can be uh, optimistic, optimistic or, or there is some kind of hope or whatever. There's no hope. And so it get worse. In, a, in a way, like, like the, the, the train in the performance uh, with the sound, the performance is also like this. One one line, but in that, of course, that, of course, you still play. a thing like um, you, you yeah, in in the beginning we show only um, before the first train comes in. We show we show the one uh, or, or or three um, an execution. So we do a very deliberately make. A, 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 see how we dose things and also like yeah, there were also uh, some some executions that were shown in another way then we think no it's just too much we cannot show all the all the gross things so we have to think very carefully how we dose things and it's deliberate that first you see three individuals killed and then as you see the horror the total horror we see a guess a guess uh, a guessing where thousands are killed and then we go back like uh we are here again, but so we we just yeah we think very well out in which um, uh, order we show the, all the material, and sometimes we have to throw material away because yeah, like with film montage, 
and um, sometimes we think oh we don't have enough of this or that and then we we add more so but it it always kind of has that it that it becomes heavier even with camp that you know in the end we show all the dead bodies and in the beginning we don't show them so yeah we often go from some and and we start with kind of happy propaganda yeah that is true so it's yeah. all, all, always a little bit from up <laughs> to down yeah. but it, it yeah or yeah in a way a bit like commercial movies uh, we, we try kind of rhythms we try to create rhythms that 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 to create trains that you can hop on and go on and yeah, yeah. But it's, it's seldom a story that we tell. It's mostly a, it's a world that we show or an, yeah. an, a period of it. A, a, but there for, 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 for yeah. with, with our, um, actually, there was also something I wanted to, to add about why we use models or what, and the documentary thing that, that we also, like you said, Holland and Indonesia, I'm not sure if all the audience is aware that Indonesia was a colony of, 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 of the Netherlands or of Holland. Yeah. So um, we, we, uh, we then also thought we're going to do about time. <laughs> uh, we wanted to show 350 years in one hour. So we like to experiment with, with this time thing, like, okay, we, we, uh, we do 24 yeah. hours and then we thought, okay, let's do 350 years. From the first ship to the last ship, but yeah. that, that, that we, we couldn't, we failed. it was we failed. too much. It, yeah. was, it was too much, but it was something that we tried and, but. It did because at, at first when we started this process we thought we want we only wanted to show the last the independent war which was like the war in which the, the biggest war that, that the Netherlands fought out uh, we but then we thought how did the Netherlands how did the Dutch get there and then we went to uh, yeah 1600 something where where the Dutch actually uh, yeah, invaded or started the, their first colonial activities and this is also something which why we also like working with models, like um, a model is created to get uh, a notion of scale or to, to, to get an idea of numbers and to see, to, to get grip on literally big things. That's what models are for. But it, it also works in events, like literally very big events like the Holocaust, like uh, the First World War, like war in general, like the 9-11 um, uh, attack. Um, it, it, it helps us as artists, but also what we shared it with an audience to get grip on these huge events and to just get grip on them. Like they're huge and then uh, we put them in a stage and then you can see thousands of characters, but you can see them and you can look at them all and you can be there and you can somehow get a, get a grip on history or get a notion and what you say like i uh, we're also get in and it's not all not always that we film puppets but we also sometimes just film only what the puppets see we don't even film the puppets but we just film what they see how they see the world so we really and that's what's projected on the screen so the audience they can see this oh, huge world that they can try to Grip, grip, grip up, and you can be totally in it. But when you're inside, you don't see the whole thing. So what happens in our theater? You can see both this huge thing and the the perspective inside. And what we do, it's interesting that you notice that that we go some from one perspective to another, like how, like Herman does in his movie. At one point, you look from the cockpit and see these World Trade Towers getting closer and closer. Like you have the point of view of these pilots. And from the other moment, you get the point of view of the people in the towers that he does that in his animation film, but we also do that on stage. So this is also giving so much, um, yeah, possibilities like looking things, looking to history or looking to events that happen that we have to, we have to take stand in, but we can see different points of view, which is super interesting, of course, uh, and, and see the large the large scale and I think this is this is as storytellers what what we've been playing with in in our in our work so and with the, the, and the, that, that, that uh, the performances are about the first world war about the holocaust about uh her colonization of Indonesia uh we perform these uh these performances <laughs> a lot abroad and um we uh, always talk with the audience afterwards and uh have with the first world war performance uh, for example we performed in america we did 
uh, great big tours. And at that time, the, the audience was uh, in this Iraq war. And for them, the performance, of course, it was about first, but, but, but it was also about their war they were fighting at, yeah, at, at, that, at that moment. And with, uh, the, the, with camp, uh, we performed in uh, in uh, in um, in Leningrad um, uh, in in, um, in, um, in uh, Russia this year, and uh, uh, yeah, people they were talking about the camps they had at this time where homosexuals are uh, have uh, abandoned to, and uh, we performed in Los Angeles camp, and uh, afterwards we had talk with uh, people who were talk who were. Uh, talking about the the Mexican border, yeah, the, the but this is it is, it is, uh, it, it, this is really interesting. People make it actual, but it's also about reviving history. So it's also about that that you know colonization in Holland. People have forgot it, or the Holocaust. People are forgetting it. It it is about camps today, but it's also about the camp at that time, and it's That's also the about the for us. At that time. It's also about. 1600 how did how did it start so we can it's it's also really about history and looking at history with new eyes or yeah or with eyes that we did not have we create we can create images like you know inside the, the the concentration camp there was maybe there was film but the films are destroyed there were some pictures taken and uh, taken out but not pictures of everything the camps the gas chambers were destroyed so we by recreating it uh we can show it also like the 16th century the 16th 17th century where colonization of indonesia started we can create that world and we film it and it's there it is, in it is interesting that <clears throat> I think I think if if you um, that the after the show it it's almost always about, when we talk to the audience almost always about the show and about what it means for today what what similar things are happening now and that's inter I, I think I, I I never had it after in a movie about uh, the Second World War that you talk afterwards about the war. In Iraq, what was going uh, or another war at, at the moment? It, it's it is because maybe and it's maybe because it's so um, it, it's real and unreal. It's 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 of course it's not really Auschwitz or it's not really the world first world war, but it's also real really on stage. People see and yeah. see actually the buildings, see the people, and in their minds, in their in their in their imagination, they make it real. They make the puppets real people. They make it a real camp. So in a way they were witnessing a real uh genocide or a real war or a real uh, people going into Indonesia, walking through the jungle. Colonization. But, but it's, it's but, happening now. It's happening now in theater. Yeah, and That's also and also maybe that that in in cinema it's always more realistic. You know, you have new actors. Uh, you know, it's more historical drama, etc. Yeah. With us, it's more it's abstract. So it's, it's it's also, real. Do you think that part of this is because there isn't a verbal text? In other words, because there's no verbal text, that it's but there is, but there, but there is. is. Well, uh, well, in, in the great in camp, in, in, camp, in camp, there is not, as Caroline explained. In camp, there's no text. That, that, that's that's correct. It's a lot of room for the spectator to have their own relationship with the events. In other words, because there isn't a verbal text in camp, yeah, that it becomes iterations of it, the, the events that are portrayed are kind of iconic, um, but. But uh, but that you one can perhaps immediately make a leap to this is not only the Holocaust, Auschwitz, Birkenau, but this is also the nature of a certain kind of incarceration, and and a kind of industrialization of human bodies, you know, with the panopticon, with the guard in the guard tower, that we can make those leaps because we're not held to a literal narrative. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. just throwing that out there. Yeah, no, but for camp is really what you say. It, it's true. It it is not it is not verbal, but Great War has has extra letters, and um, almost all our other performances do have some some text. So it's not it's not like gen, in, in general for all, all our shows. But in camp, definitely, uh, the fact that we chose for not using language is is. Um, is bringing people even more in that situation. I think also that's why we decided to to skip the language. But in Great War, where language is important, although it's not big, 
we look through the eyes of the soldiers and then the voice over, you can hear their thoughts or you can hear their letters that they write in their diaries. So in that one, the text is very important because it brings you in the mind. Yes. And also sometimes we give information that we can show with them. Um, Hmm? Yeah, um, a question, um, you, you said that it's, uh, it's about huge things, uh, what you do your work about, and it's also connected to the now, and that moment, uh, the time of Corona we are in, is anything changing in your thinking about theatre, and are you working on anything right now? Uh... We took the the big things can also actually be things in in uh, big things that happen in our own lives. For instance, we made also some performance about the death of uh, Ardenna's father, when, who died when she was very young. Um, so the big things are not necessarily always big. Uh, in, in, in regard of using with a lot the, with of the love puppets, a lot of uh... <laughs> but um, no, it actually did not really change our way of thinking. I'm afraid. Well, well, well maybe, but maybe uh, that for me, theater is even more important. And what, what, why, why is very... it? Not... Yeah, what, and what do you uh, want? Well, well, the, the, well, um. In the art, I can say, if not, not, not only theater, but art. And that's that. Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, about uh, for, for maybe maybe 10, 15 years in 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 Holland, uh, art and artists were very um, yeah. In a way, it was almost not dirty to to uh, be an artist, but it was not. You were not um, respected in a way, and the government didn't give you the feeling that art was is was worthful and and, and important. So, and that was really about 10, 15 years and um, being artist and having a theater company, it was very commercialized. So uh, the only thing we were thinking about was how can we make money? Uh, we are very lucky to be subsidized by the government. There are so many rules you have to, uh, ha uh, um, you have to um, obey. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, that it was almost, making art was becoming on the, something yeah. like there and that really did something with our minds as being an artist more being like a manager or being you know and with the corona suddenly everything fell down and it was silent and uh yeah people were um in shock and you know <laughs> what happened it happened to all throughout the world and then suddenly people climbed uh, they they um, they um, uh, the, the 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 making art and and uh, little initiatives came and uh, people were so happy when something happened and uh, and suddenly also had that we we get the the government gives us more respect and uh, more respectful towards art and giving us the feeling uh, that, that it's important and not only the government, but also the, the people. And so that is something that is, yeah, something very positive that's uh, along with, uh, with all, the, all the negative things and the terrible things that I think that, um, yeah, that is something very positive that came out of this. It becomes more obvious. It became more obvious that people need art, that, that art is needed, that yeah. people really need it. And before Corona, there was also guys, yeah, but what what is art? What is what is uh, what is the use of art? It was always the use of art, and then became a kind of commercial use of the value it has or the money, the, the economic value. And now everything stopped, and and theaters were closed, everything, cinemas were closed, and, and museums, and and everyone's craving for art and it became more obvious now that art has a value that's in, in itself that cannot be expressed in any other way and that's 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 uh, that's that's quite important and in the meantime we are trying to uh <laughs> yeah we're about... taking our uh, to go to your other question what yeah. are you working on at this time we are also uh with a lockdown period taking our time to to think um, to work a little bit ahead in thinking uh, what we have, of course, some plans. We have a we have a plan of a, pro, um, a next a next uh, 
um, part of, of our, our empire and maybe taking another period or another colony. <laughs> Uh, because uh, Holland also had Suriname, which is in uh, South uh, South America. Um, so, so we are thinking of uh, of going into that theme again, but then maybe with maybe also with uh, a descendant of uh, of slaves. Um, you know, the Holland was also a huge uh, slave uh, slave trade nation, and we we really have the idea of oh, it would be interesting to do something with that. But then, of course, we are all white. So we're kind of yeah we cannot do that on our own. That would be um, not not a good idea. So we're thinking of how to how to make a collab collaboration possible. Maybe to make a show about that team, uh, that theme, um, more about yeah what what colonization um, evoked, uh, and also yeah we we were asked to make a huge uh, a, a family opera. Um, to, to take a next step in in our uh, opera in an in an opera work and and make a concept for of how we can use our art form in in opera again, but then and also an opera work for for both children as adults. So yeah, we are we are trying to to think of, we are think thinking about, about that, and uh, yeah, we are also thinking oh maybe it would be nice to do some things with the VR. <laughs> Our glasses, or uh, to make uh, as as we uh, Herman, we we have a daughter who has uh, autism. Uh, thinking of making uh, making a so show especially for children who have autism, and also a, a show that is uh, possible to play in their schools, as maybe going to theater is too hard for them. So we're also thinking about uh, a children's play, especially then for children with autism. But it would be nice if it's fun for everybody and try to make that kind of interactive or also we are going to to think about uh, you know game technology or something interactive <laughs> so like new techniques and see if we can bring that in that because as our daughter is really helped by playing games games are very important for her but also showing her the way in the world so we are thinking also about like some kind of adventure of a little girl that is based on our daughter um, in a kind of game world well, we are just, you know, fantasizing about all these different, um, yeah, elements that that could maybe end in in a, one of our in our new shows. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a lot. Quite a lot, but uh, yeah, we have to. We did not choose which which one is coming no. next. The opera is coming probably in two or three years. Yeah. And we are also talking. We are also uh, thinking of a, a, another theater company that, that that we find very interesting and see talk with them if maybe we can collaborate. Yeah, they're more actors. So, so. yeah. But we will see. We have a lot of uh, yeah. Ideas yeah, yeah, and and we are just like the three of us uh, in the atelier and uh, thinking about all these things and uh, working them out and. Um, but they're not worked out yet as no. well. Not worked out yet. Yeah. More about them no, very, just... very at the beginning yeah. and, and, and uh, beginning and, and try to to. It, it was a, the, actually the first Corona lockdown kind of hit yeah. on us very hard because we also been working very hard and also had to write a new application and then also at one point we weren't. Uh, um, we were the money that we asked for uh, was not coming, <laughs> so we thought we have to m maybe stop with the company because we, we don't get subsidy anymore. So then we had to fight to, to to get to get the subsidy back and to make the politicians give more money to artists. So then we put on our, all our energy on that fight and. It, uh, it's not a creative uh, energy, <laughs> it's just fighting to get your money. So meantime, we couldn't think of our next plans. And now, luckily, maybe also because of Corona, the government had some more money for theater and companies like us are saved. And now we can <laughs> breathe again and yeah, make this making being in this process of, of uh, developing all these new yeah. different plans that we are in the coming years, we will, but we will let you but know. Yeah, but it's a, but it's a very uncertain time because actually we would have ha done the performances this this weeks, but now uh, suddenly the, the government said to uh, shut down the theaters for two weeks, and then it's like okay, okay, and uh, so yeah, it's it's very strange. You have to. Well, it's actually, that's the project. I'm, I'm actually directing. It's it's not with Herman and Elena, yeah. but um, I'm 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 directing also a co-production of Hotel Modern with with a, a company which is actually also about the colony about Indonesia, the colony there. Uh, it's and then for children. So then we we tell the story of. Uh, 
of the um, yeah the Dutch colony in one of the islands of Indonesia and where um, yeah there was a kind of also kind of genocide actually um, th that the Dutch killed people from from uh, the Banda from an island Ban uh, Ban one of the Banda okay. islands yeah they killed they killed many of the people because they uh, the Dutch wanted to keep the monopoly on um, on spices, the trade yeah. of of uh, spices nutmeg nutmeg yeah. and uh, and then the people of this island sold uh, sold their spices also to other countries like people from England uh, people from well from <laughs> other countries they wanted free trade and the Dutch said no you only have your you can only sell it to us and we have this deal and then they said oh we don't have a deal we just sell to everybody uh, who we want to and then the Dutch they went into this island and kill 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 the whole uh, kill the man <laughs> who resisted and uh, the others were were made slave uh, so this is really a horrible story, and uh, and the show that I'm directing now uh, is also telling this story, but then in a way for children, but it's still telling the story and also showing that the yeah the, the, how the Dutch also even about monopoly and that they want to keep everything for themselves and that they don't want to share and yeah it's it's a in a way it's going to be a fun performance ab about um, yeah about colonialism and about uh, monopoly. Uh, yeah, economic things and about the importance of sharing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that is uh, rather extraordinary, I think, is how, how many people today come to learn about historical events through theater and um, film, learn about them, learn about them in greater nuance and detail than from uh, the more conventional means of reading history books. It seems to put an extra burden on artists in terms of really mining and representing relationships to history and, and getting it right. And at the same time, um, having a critical lens uh, while constructing you know, these great detailed um, stages. Uh, and it's that very reason why I wanted to draw attention to Theater the Real because um, there are so many methods, so many claims to truth. This is what really happened. We, we assembled these documents for correctives to events. I mean, there's a great uh, uh, play in coming out of the UK which is called The Color of Justice. And it, it, it happened well after the murder of a young man on the street by a group of white racist thugs murdered a young black man. But, but the, the play, the performance of the play, which I believe was at the Tricycle Theater itself, um, really kind of uh, accumulated everything that had happened, assembled it, um, digested it, and presented it back for, to a British audience. And really in the service of articulating the importance of what the inquiry found, and what they found was unconscious racism. So it was a kind of underscoring and closure in the, that the play itself provided to, to about 10 years, I estimated, of events in the British press where the, the young white thugs were never convicted of the crime. So, I mean, that's just one example, yours is another. There's so much interesting work that this kind of theater does and it puts artists in, in new kinds of situations. So I'm wondering, Frank, if you wanna uh, offer some closing observations. <clears throat> it's so great hearing about your work and your, your you know, artistry. You know, thank you, uh, Carol, you know, for, for being with us and for Con Hotel Modern. I think uh, uh, someone said, theater is a model itself. For the moment, you know, it's real on stage, whether you, it's not a real thing, but it's a model and it shows that uh, with imagination and, uh, and in a symbolic way, it shows a reality. What has happened, might have happened, should have happened, and it is real. We had the Indian uh, writer uh, Abhishek with us. He said, uh, there's TV shows, there are films all around India, but my plays get shut down by the government. It affects people in a different way. It has an impact. People remember it. 
and um, there's truth to it. And I think as much as uh, lawyers and the justice system is looking for truth, as much as uh, um, I think uh, um, uh, journalists, uh, politicians looking for artists are also looking to, for truth and representing truth, but knowing there are different levels, different point of views, as you said. And perhaps uh, we listen more to a puppet uh, and because we don't, we project on it it's not a represented in a human body where it might have an agenda it's not male or female often it's not really clear i think handspring uh, basil jones said that that why they were successful why people listen to a puppet is because you can connect to it in a different way it doesn't have an agenda it can even say insulting things or other things that others don't listen to and i think uh, the time we live in we do need uh, some meaning some guidance uh, there's the famous David Byrne film, Stop Making Sense, I think we have to start making sense. It's Jenny Bass, the rock and roll and post-punk singer says, and I think what you guys do, the inquiries, um, is a, a contribution um, and to do that. And I think the idea of the theater of the real gives, um, gives a possibility for theater artists to rethink also what they are doing, what impact it can have and um, what it should have. It perhaps always had, but we have to refine it in a new way. And I think your work um, is, uh, is is significant because of that. Is there are real histories, alternate histories, and we look at things from different ways. And that's what so many of the artists we talk to said. We often also go back to classics, but we tell it through the eyes of a minor character of a different way, so that official histories say no. This is just one way to look at it, and it comes from people in power. And perhaps it's not really what happened. Just to be aware that uh, uh, there are multiple truths out and that everybody who says this is how it is, is lying to us, we, what we think the Trump administration or many others um, um, who warn us, but they are the ones we should be warned for. And if someone says this is black and white, is this or that, there's no point of view, it's not true. And um, I think this work uh, that stands uh, for the theater of the real is of real significance and it's a great responsibility, actually. Perhaps artists never ask for, but you guys are <laughs> over responsibilities of uh, what perhaps has been neglected by educational system, but in a way, or by, by history. So um, really, um, I think this is of, of great importance, and what you do is uh, also fun, and it's great, and it's artistic invention. So it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great contribution, and I hope you will be back soon. Carol, who's coming up and uh, maybe say a little bit on the next two days, a little tiny words about them and uh, uh, why do you be uh, um, uh, has an incredible body of work. I think that um, he's known as the master of the performed lecture and he creates inquiries into how we come to know things and whether or not what we know is actually accurate and um, uh, and then on Friday is Nicholas Kent, who is, of course, the founder of the Tricycle Theater and who produced many, uh, I guess they would call verbatim plays. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to speak to both of them. They're both extraordinary, like Hotel Modern. So um, thank you so much. It's really been great hearing about how you approach your work and how you understand it. And um, yeah, and thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. So it's well, a great pleasure. Yeah, and it's great to hear from Rotterdam and, um, and yes. had with us Menno Plucker, you know, from Canada, who has been a big supporter um, of the company, helps to organize their work. We didn't have the time to fully go into it, but thank you, um, Menno. And thanks to HowlRound for um, hosting us and for being a place for such, I think, important exchanges of ideas and for listening, really, um, to, to, to the artists. And it's also remarkable how this company invented, how they explored this. And we know someone, he was a boyfriend, he was in film, but he did models. We did, we were acting, we didn't like, so they invented something. They did not know where it was going in the beginning. The opposite of what we often are being taught. So or the way how artists create their work is of significance and an encouragement. Do something, work with fellow artists, explore what you have and create something. You might find something great as, as Hotel Modern did, and go to their website, hotelmodern.nl, I guess, right, in Netherlands. And um, yeah. and um, and this is one way to do it, hopefully, you know, it will, will inspire it. And I think the world of objects, moving objects, puppetry, is a field that is of real significance, also because it includes an audience often easier 
young audiences and something that's truly neglected and, and it's a great audience. So thank you all and I hope you will uh, stay safe um, and stay tuned in and we all hope uh, that things will go well in the United States here and with all eyes on Georgia and we maybe we have to find a way for theater artists to get involved there. Um, and um, thank you and Carol again thank you and uh, see you all soon. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you to be with us, Menos.